Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and today we are going to look at stacking some FITS files captured with an Altair Hypercam 183C color CMOS camera um, in Deep Sky Stacker. I'm going to be taking some images of the Pac-Man Nebula I shot uh, about a month ago now and I'm just going to go through some of the stacking settings uh, here in Deep Sky Stacker. So. First things first, let's open up the picture files, aka the light frames. So these are all the shots I've taken this year. As you can see, I've been busy. Uh, let's go to the Pac-Man RGB. So the first night. Let's grab our light frames. So these uh, fit file here, and uh, this is the way that APT spits the file names out uh, by default. It'll have an L in front of it. So with light frame, bin 2x2, two two, 120 seconds, 2 minutes, uh, and then there is no temperature readout on the 183C, so it just says 99 degrees. Uh, I believe I have some more. So that was on the 22nd, and on the 23rd, did I just take darks and flats? No, there are a few lights in there as well. So I'm just sorting by date modified to get a, a more organized list there. So I've got all my light frames in here. And you might have heard me say before that I like to review my light frames in Deep Sky Stacker uh, because you don't have the advantage of using something like Adobe Bridge to, to preview raw files. So I just review them here in DSS. The first thing you may notice is that uh, it's pretty much all black here. Like, where's where's the image? So see this slider up at the top right here? If you move the center arrow over to the left, uh, you'll get uh, it'll overexpose the shot, but get um, an actual preview of what it's going to look like. So I'm here in the first frame and second, and I'm just going to go through each of them to make sure no major um, there's no major uh, oblong stars or anything of, of like a, a shift in the telescope or anything. Uh, a big part of this too is that it's actually, it's not the most convenient thing in the world to zoom in and look um, at these images. That's not so intuitive for, for this kind of stuff like Photoshop would be. Um, so while I'm taking these frames, I do, I do review them as well and kind of go through them. So to give myself a little head start. But I know the, the guiding in general was great that night. Uh, so these are all going to be, these are going to look really well. So I had, I was running dithering, but uh, very subtle. These frames are not moving around too much from frame to frame, but they are just ever so slightly. So that's good. Just going through here. A bit painstaking but uh, it just means that I've got lots of data to produce an image. Now you can let DSS decide the best frames to use um, but I don't trust that I'd rather um, review each frame myself. That's not for everybody but uh, that's the way I do it. So I'm just going to review the rest of these. Oh, looks like I got a bad one in there, so I'm going to remove from list. And when in doubt, just compare it to uh, another another uh, good version. So I'm going to take this one out too. Yeah, something was going on here. So I've got a couple of a couple of doozies in there I'm gonna take out. And then if I remember correctly, things get better. There we go. So I've reframed and refocused here. You can see the difference in the uh, the stars got a lot sharper here. And then, obviously, something was going on here for these two, but I think that was it. 
I've since, um, my guiding has gotten a lot more consistent. How many do we have here? So at least three. And then we're back to normal. The other thing too is look at these frames, how, how not centered the object is. I'm not sure if you can see the shape of the Pac-Man nebula in there, but it's way off to the, to the right. So the framing kind of bothered me in this, this target um, I, to the point where I almost wanted to reshoot my RGB data, but I actually really liked uh, the quality of the data I got here. I just didn't like the framing, so I don't think I'll, I'll take another crack at it until next year. Almost done going through these lights here. Another thing to note here, so you can see what these files look like. Um, they're, you know, rather small, 2720 by 1824 pixels. That's due to the binning, so it cuts the uh, resolution in half, uh, but also condenses that pixel data. The depth, gray 16-bit, uh, and then you can see that they were taken using uh, the Altair ASCOM camera driver, and that's through APT, and then the exposure time here. I never really pay attention to the number of stars. As you can see, that one says, yeah, it's not counting the stars in that one, although they're, they are certainly there. Something to pay attention to, though. Um, almost done here. There's a couple in there that, uh, you know, I'm rushing through this a little bit. There's a couple in there I probably would have liked to have taken out. So I think when I do go to the stacking stage, I'm going to say use 90% rather than the full 100%. Look at that framing, it's right at the bottom. And of course, you're only going to get that uh, clean image uh, to your worst framed portion of the image. Um, so that layering uh, is going to really affect my final image. It's going to be, I'm going to be cropped right, right to this edge here. Okay, and so those light frames were the bubble nebula, and I think I got one last bad frame to remove there, and then we were onto the bubble. I shot that the same night, same settings. I'm going to remove those. Don't want to screw things up there. Uh, so another option, of course, is just to remove all the frames where the, with the bad framing and just stack the ones with the, you know, the framing I like. Uh, I'd rather crop in heavily and use all the data at this point. Just a, a decision I am making. So we've went through all of those. Sorry if that was a little boring. We're going to check all. And now it shows us we have 112 light frames. Not too bad. 112 two-minute light frames. Uh, now this part is a lot faster. Grab our dark files from the same night. So it will be the same temperature. Oh, D for darks. I believe there's 20. 25. Okay, and then I always have a look at the dark dark frames just to make sure. Yeah, this one I remember there was something going on with the first two. So those don't look like dark frames to me. I must have had um, I must have had the cap off or the or a light on or something, but. Um, so it looks like we've got 23 darks, and these, these are typical of darks with the 183C. You can see the, uh, the glow here from the side, that gets, that all gets removed out in the stacking process. Uh, owners of the 183C are probably used to that. And then the flat files, uh, if you saw my video of how to shoot those. Uh, so for this camera, in APT, I use the flat, flats aid, and it works really well. 
Let's grab our flats. So the filter used for these shots was the Bader Moon and Sky Glow. I believe, or it may have been the Explore Scientific UHC. I tested a few um, light pollution filters, and actually that Explore Scientific model and the Bader Moon and Sky Glow, Glow were almost identical in the, the data I saw. Uh, so both great choices. Hopefully I can confirm that and put it in the description of this video. Let's look at our flats. Okay, looking good. Uh, this sensor, actually there is no, there's still not a single particle of dust on it. I've been really good in uh, not letting anything get in there since day one. Uh, so the flats are more just used to correct the uneven field and the vignetting at this point. And it shows you the, the exposure time in here, very, very, very fast, 0. 0.00065 seconds. Okay, we've got everything together. We're going to check all. So 112 light frames, 23 dark frames, 15 flats. Uh, no bias frames. Uh, I've tried stacking bias with this camera and not stacking bias. I have no idea whether it makes a difference or not, but I've been told that the, with this camera that no bias frames are needed and that it might even actually make the image worse. In my testing, I've seen no difference whatsoever, so... I'll let you decide that, but no bias for this one. Okay, so let's look at the settings here. So the settings you want to look at here are in the FITS files tab. So we've got it checked off. Monochrome 16-bit FITS files are raw files created by DSLR or CCD camera. Uh, so these are, in fact, grayscale 16-bit files created by a, in quotation, CCD camera for as far as uh, DSS is concerned, uh, but I get in big trouble if I ever call the 183C a CCD camera. Uh, so generic RGGB, RGGB is the uh, bare pattern of this camera. Not going to make any adjustments here to the, the color adjustments. Uh, and then the Bayer matrix transformation mode is adaptive homogeneity directed AHD. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering how to say that, but uh, I just, I just can't do it. So we're going to apply that. Those are the settings I use. And then OK. And we can go into register stacked checked pictures. Like I said, we're going to use 90%. I'm going to check off register already registered pictures. And then here's um, an important setting for um, grayscale fits files that are very dim like the ones we're using here. So it's set to four because that's the last amount I used. Let's see how many stars it picks up. 85 stars. That's a good amount to stack. Uh, that's kind of right in the sweet spot actually. That's probably why it's set there to four. But the default from DSS is 10. And if you compute the number of stars there, it might not find any. Zero stars. So obviously you'd have some major issues stacking and it wouldn't stack at all. That was a big uh, roadblock in the beginning, and I thought, uh, because I hadn't messed with it too much before, I thought that bumping it up would detect more stars, but it's actually the reverse. So let's go back down to 4%. Perfect. We'll take a look at the recommended settings, and I'm going to leave these as they are. Um, so if you want to kind of make some notes here, but these, this works well. Uh, I've played with a few settings here and tested different things. And uh, it's um, right now it's set to my the last time I ran this, and it's uh, settings that are working well. Uh, as you know, per channel background calibration, sigma clipping combination method. Um, don't use bilinear deep bearing or super pixel mode. And yeah, let's go. Say OK. It'll tell us how long this exposure is going to be. Three hours and 44 minutes. So we are going to stack the Pac-Man Nebula.